Okay, so, hey everybody, my name is Miss Ray Ray. Welcome back to Game Design Fridays. I redesigned, well, I moved stuff in my room. I don't have my door closed because that one freaks out. So, hopefully this one goes well. Hopefully I can edit this video this time. All the other ones have been too long or something was wrong with my either streaming setup or video editing setup. Either way, hopefully I can edit this one so it's not as long. But okay, so you're here to see the progress I made in my sabbatical that I was not intending to take, but it turns out I needed a little more time off from the issues I was having before. Um, so let's switch over to here and I'll show you what I've done which it won't look like a lot, but it took me a long time to figure some of this out. Okay, so let's start with the obvious differences. No, okay, well, there's a little edge. Um, okay, let's play. And I will just walk you through the certain things that I've done that I think I've done. Okay, first off. This is, no, so it's the camera. Camera has the music. Let's just do point two, because this thing is always so loud for me. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so, don't know if I showed you this before, but can't go left or right, can only go up and down with the camera now. Um, I think it's just better that way. It was making me dizzy before, kind of, like I didn't realize it until I was stepping away, but I was like, oh wow, my equilibrium is off after I get done with this or when I take breaks. So that's a thing. Um, I added two power-ups, well, a power-up and a power-down, um, kind of. Um, this red one right here, okay, this red one right here, um, slows me down. Let me find the player, and you'll see in here there's a new, let me move me to right here. Um, and then, sort of, you can see I added a new bull, there was like a slow run and a slow time like there's a okay well there's two new timers but the one i'm going to focus on right now is the slow timer um that sh that will tell me how long i will be slow for and the move speed itself will go down by like half um so like i click it and i have slowed down for a number for well 10 seconds i have it down for 10 seconds and that will be very inconvenient once I figure out how to make it inconvenient. And then I have another one set up. This power up lets me fly. And there will be a timer for how long for that up here. Um, but it's a power up, but also like there's negative connotations because you cannot control how high up you go. Um, yeah, I just kind of turn gravity off, and once you jump, you just go up until gravity turns back on. Um, but yeah, that's a power up. It's just, it's one of those, be careful what you wish for power ups. Um, because very often times when I'm dreaming that I'm flying, I can't control how I fly. I'm staring at my stream instead of you. I'm sorry. It's not really a stream, though. It's more just a recording, but I'm using a streaming setup to record. It's a thing. Um, so yeah, that is most of what I've been working on. Let me turn this off because it's distracting. You can't see me do my arm movements that I like to do when I talk. So yes, that is mostly what I've been working on. I've had to work on that and then how it affects the other world. So like this <clears throat> flying text. I had to do like scripts for um, going to flying countdown. There's nothing in here, but the text itself 
there's just like text for flying and then there is the countdown which is the zero zero I have it in here as flying text script um, let's go into here flying text script there we go so this is an entirely new script let me go I had to use unity engines UI because that is how you go through um, see stuff let me scroll out so I can show you all of this is a canvas um, and to access it via script you need to use unity engines UI within there so you put that in there um, what I needed for this script um, was to be able to publicly see the game object of the text countdown um, I need to publicly find where the player is um, I needed to control the players player controller script so I use that um, by referencing it as the player controller um, and I cr that variable and named it timer because I will be using the timer that you saw in the player controller script in order to um, figure out how long the script will be seen. Um, I made a public float for time just because I would like to see it going down while I'm editing. Um, it doesn't need to be that way. You guys won't necessarily see it except for like in the text, but that can be done through the script, not necessarily like in the editor. Um, and then I made a text variable of text. So the script itself knows that it's looking for a text. Um, this I just had a comment out because I wanted to see if it worked better um, at the start of the game versus like looking throughout um, the game while it's playing and so that's when it's green like that you can ignore it but at the very start of the level text will equal um, the game the game object this script is attached to um, text component so um, this countdown text is also a game object and a, and a text at the same time. So the script will look for, will go into the game object, which is the countdown, um, look through its list of assets, and we'll find the text component. They're not assets, they're components. We'll go through the list of components and find the text script component and that will be referenced in this script as text um, and then in the update function so within each frame what was it update is called every frame if the mono behavior is enabled yes so every frame it will look for a player game object with the tag player so it will always be referencing and finding the player within the game object or within the game not game object um, the timer will always be the players um, player controller component so because that's the that's the reason why um, lines of code um, where you place it within the line is very important I wouldn't be able to reference the player without having the player referenced first or player I wouldn't be able to reference the player without knowing what the player is within the game so that's why a player with the tag comes first and then the timer will equal whatever component the player is in um, so the timer will equal players player controller component and time will equal the timers fly time and I will show you what that is when I get to the player controller script. Um, so if, and I love if else statements in this, I don't know why. It's just easier to do than like coroutines. Um, but if the, what did I have? Oh, right. So I have the game object countdown public. Um, so I can reference 
the parent of the countdown text. So flying countdown is in fact the public form of countdown in here. Um, so when that is active within the hierarchy, so if so it will look in here through its inventory if it is active or not. Um, if it is active, um, I have it in my little console log to say, hey, the countdown is on. And also the time will minus equal the time on your computer dot delta time. So like it will, because it's a float, it will um, subtract um, increments of time in a decimal fashion. Um, minus equal in here usually just means it will go, it will, it's like, it's like subtraction in math. It's just, it's going to be continual throughout like the time frame. That's why you have it in floats and not like integers. Integers are whole numbers. So it will go down by the whole number. I want it to go down like seconds. So you use floats for seconds like that. I rarely ever actually use integers because like whole numbers are different. Like that would be for things like bullet counts or, or like health, sometimes health. It just really depends on how you need to use it. But I usually use floats for most things. Um, so time will, if, if the countdown game object, which is the parent of this, what the script is on, is active, the timer or the time will go down until it hits <clears throat> zero. Yes, so until it hits zero, um, it will go down in time. So you saw, so you can see it. This is how it works. Um, it's not active. It's only active when you need to use it. So, um, so you see down here, uh, up, well, okay. You see that it's like going down in increments of decimals. That's how it works. Once it's active, the timer will go down. Um, otherwise, the timer just equals the timer fly time in the player controller. Sorry, I'm having difficulty with words. My dogs are running. That makes me nervous. Okay, never mind. False alarm. Um, I got distracted and I lost my place. Okay, so yeah. So then if when it's not act else means just it's not true, when it's not active in the hierarchy, it will just reset back to its original fly time. Um, and then within the update, after all of that, um, text.text, .text, meaning the text of the text component. So in here, you see text. Um, this would be the dot text version. So like the, the variable within the text script. So text, text dot text. So it would be controlling this right here. Um, equals the time float, like the float time. So um, like the 10 seconds is the float um, to string. You have to put to string because a float doesn't necessarily equal um, words or like the text itself. It sees it as two different components. So to string is just, um, I don't remember the word for it. It's just a way for the for the script itself to realize, oh, okay, I have to convert this number system into a text system. And then you put in here um, 0.0, .0 within the two string parentheses to show, I don't want this shown in whole numbers, I want it in a whole and decimal system. If I were to put another zero in here, so it'd be 0.00, .00. Um, when I show the text in game, um, the countdown, it, okay, well, 
still show you um, this. It will then show, oh, I guess it doesn't. It just shows the point zero. But I was under the, well, okay, there's a different way to do it. Let me just do zero to show you better. Um, system in there it would just show numbers but that didn't look right to me because it's like oh it's going slow slow I, I should have plenty of time to do all of this but I don't want it to because I kind of want you to feel like oh numbers are moving rapidly I better use this while I have it so it's kind of like a subliminal manipulation sort of but like that's just life you do it on purpose and then um, I have it set after all of that I'm getting distracted again sorry I'm getting distracted by the thing that I'm trying to teach that's that's some ADHD there is it teaching different time um, on, I have a different function called um, on disable so when this script itself is no longer active or enabled as it was trying to tell me in the update function um, it will tell my little console here, um, down here, um, that the script has been turned off, so the countdown is off. Um, okay, so that is the full, um, the tr I have, which is, you know what? This is the trigger that I have the trigger flying trigger script on. Um, it's just a box with a clicker in it, and it just has um, is trigger in its box collider component on, so it knows that it doesn't collide with anything. It's just sort of a, it's just sort of there. Um, and within this, I don't really have anything set as like what it needs to look out for in the beginning. But within a fixed update, I have um, its transform. So it's pretty much its little boxy being. Um, I have it rotate in place just to kind of like show, hey, I'm not of, I'm not of this like games normal physics um, pay attention to me so I just have it kind of rotate in place um, so you have to get to the trans so you have to get the game components transform dot rotate because you want it on its rotation right here um, you have to put in a new vector 3 so it knows okay so there's its idle sort of placement and then there's what you want me to do so this is a new new rotation and then you just sort of have it set to um so it's xyz as normal but when you have xyz in a rotation sense this is the x um this is the y and then the blue is always going to be like the Z. So it would be X, Y, Z um, on its rotation. I just have like the X to kind of stay in place. I have the Y and Z rotating by time dot delta time. So it's not just spinning in a weird motion. Um, yeah, it's how you're it's the interface to get time information from unity so yeah it's just spinning in time times 80 because if i didn't do that let's see how it looks when i do that it doesn't at all like it's spinning, you can see in here, it's trying to spin. 
but it's doing so slowly because it's going with the computer's time. So you have to like times it. You have to multiply it by like a good enough number so it looks normal. Uh, yeah, just save that. So I have it just kind of spinning in place while it's waiting to be collided with via its trigger. And then um, to trigger it is an entire fun uh, an entirely different function altogether. So you have to use on trigger enter or there's an on trigger exit or there's an on trigger stay. Um, it just depends on how you want to do it. Enter is like, oh, you first touched it. Stay is, oh, you are in it. And then exit is, oh, you got out of it. Very easy to comprehend. Um, so you have to put in the parameter of its collider because that's where its trigger is. And then you have to name that collider other or whatever you want it to do. You just have to name the collider that it's colliding with. Um, so normally it's other, um, just so you know that, hey, so it's not this trigger itself, it's what is triggering it. Um, so if the collider that is triggering it is has a tag player, so if the player touches it, um, you want, I want it to trigger the other player, um, the other game objects player controller component to its bool of fly on to equal true. Um, and then the trigger, like the game object will destroy itself. That's how it disappears once the player touches it. Um, so like kind of simple for me. I didn't have to like research this one for once. Um, yeah, so once it once the player collides with it, it will trigger the player to fly and then it will destroy itself. Um, in the player controller, because I keep mentioning it and it keeps being referenced to other things, I added two bulls, which is fly on and slow time or slow run, I guess. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. I added the bull fly on public so I know that it's working within the editor. Um, I added the bull slow run again so I can monitor it from the editor. I don't have to like have it, have the script and then the editor on at the same time. Um, I added a slow time. Where's, oh, I added the two, f I added f one, two, <laughs> three. I added three floats. Okay. I can't move very fast apparently. I added three floats. There was a fly time, a slow time, and a slow speed. Um, so they're kind of simple to, because of the titles for them, they're kind of simple for how they need to be seen. Um, it, at the start of the game, or at the start of when this script is enabled, um, I have fly on turn to false because I don't want him just jumping and into the air whenever he feels like it. I have fly time equal 10, so like 10 seconds. Um, that's not applicable. I have in the update function slow speed equaling 2. I was going to do math in it, so like whatever the move speed was, it would just be half of whatever that is. But doing that, in an update function like this, it would just always be half of whatever it was. So if it started at four, one frame it would be two, and another in the next frame it would be one, in the next frame it would be half of one, in the next frame it would be a quarter of one, and it would just keep going down. And that's impossible <laughs> to walk through because that just looks like you're standing still, but you're actually just moving incredibly slow. For 10 seconds and it just keeps going down and then it goes back to being four and you're like zoom it's fun but it's useless so i just made them numbers so slow speed will always be two even though the move speed kind of just stays at one um that didn't 
change. I was going to have it change to where like if you're pressing the mouse button to like run while you're in slow mode, it would move a little bit faster, but I can't find the math for that. So it's not working right now. Um, so here it is. Character runs into the slow trigger. Um, if slow run, which is the bool I made up here, is true, the move speed will equal the slow speed now. So four will go to two. Um, the float slow time will subtract with the computer and unity time until it hits zero. Um, if slow time is less than or equal to zero, because sometimes it does that, like it, you're like when it hits a clock or like with floats, it won't just go down to zero. Negative numbers, negative numbers exist. So it won't just go to zero and then go back to positive numbers. It will just keep going. Okay. So now it's negative one, negative two, negative three, like that. So if it minus or equals zero, um, slow run will turn off. The move speed will equal four once again, back to its normal speed. And the slow time will reset to 10. So that way it doesn't stay in zero. Um, cause then slow time, cause that's kind of like the parameter. It will, if it doesn't, if it's, if it does, because negative numbers also don't equal zero. So if you just keep having it go negative, it will never turn itself off because there will never be a zero again. Um, that's for jump. Okay, so this is the fly time. If the fly on bull equals true, um, the rigid body, the rigid body of this game object, so it's, um, So sort of like, it's just kind of like collider-esque collider -esque thing. Um, it will turn the use gravity off so it won't just stay on the floor or fall. Um, so yeah, use gravity will equal false. Fly time will go down in numeric value via um, the unity and computers time dot delta time. So it will go down in seconds, not in whole numbers. And if the fly time is less than or equal to zero for the same reason um, why slow time has to be less than or equal to zero, um, fly on will turn back on to false. Your gravity of your player will turn back to true. So you'll start falling down and fly time will reset to 10. Actually like kind of a super easy concept to me at least. Sorry. Um, do the fly text, did the fly text trigger. Slow down trigger um, is kind of the same as the flying trigger. Um, really nothing, but if it collides with a game object tagged player, I don't have this one spinning because I don't have, I have plans for it to look different in the future. And it's kind of just like a blockade that you can't avoid. That's my plan for now. So it won't always look like this red ghost of a cylinder just wallowing there. It will look different, but I have to find it first right now while I'm creating everything. I don't need it to look pretty right now. I just need it to function. Um, but once the player collides with it, it will trigger the player's slow run bull to equal true. So it will start slowing down and the game object will destroy itself. Um, in the game manager, I pretty much only had to add a public transform. Kirby, say hi. Say I'm barking at something because I love my family, but I can't do that right now. You can't, go play. Okay, sorry, my dogs do a thing. Um, yeah, I just had to add a public transform for the flying text. So public transform flying. And where did I have it? I have it set to start as false because I don't need it until it's triggered. 
Um, and then when the player controller um, will fly on equals true, the text will be active so you can see it. And I have it set on my console to say, hey, the player can fly now. Um, just to let me know that it is, in fact, um, finding the reference of player controller and setting all of that in motion. Otherwise, if it's if the player controller is false, the text is just inactive. And I believe that's all I did in the game manager for it to do that. So that's pretty much all I've done within the game, within my sabbatical, because I needed to not think for a while. Um, and with that, I think all of my mechanic work, mechanical work, is the foundation is set. Um, so with all of that, I can pretty much start the level design now. So I will work on that. Um, I will not be doing another Game Design Friday for the next two weeks because I will be out of state. Um, but I will work on paper what I think I want the level designs to be so I have something to work on when I come back to this computer. Um, so look forward to that. Um, the format will change while I'm showing you level designs because that will have like a lot more like exciting work within this space. So that format will change, but it will still be Game Design Fridays, and I will still explain sort of my methods and thought process throughout working on the game. Um, so yeah, the mechanic work is the mechanical work is mostly done now. I will have to keep making scripts and other game objects while I am designing the level, but you'll see that as it progresses. So. Thanks so much for watching. I very, very much appreciate you guys listening to me for like almost 40 minutes on just very, very basic stuff that I should already know how to do and like make within like a week span. This is what I had to do within a week of like school stuff, maybe two weeks. Maybe I'm being too hard on myself, but I really appreciate you guys like listening to me through all of this. Um, I will see you in three weeks.